Good evening and welcome to MTV's news update, June 15, 2020 editions. I'm Sandy Ramutar. For the top stories we're tracking this evening, CARICOM says recount was transparent and credible. OAS tells coalition to prepare for a transition of government. President says GCOM can and all elections. PPP will not return to Parliament unless recount results are officially declared. And in sport, West Indies head coach said the team is in good spirits. Now, for the news in detail. President Granger said nothing prevents GCOM from abstaining from making a declaration due to the various allegations of electoral fraud. However, the People's Progressive Party Civic said there are no electoral laws empowering the Commission to refrain from declaring an election's winner. President David Granger at a recent press conference reiterated that the concluded recount was marred with allegations of electoral fraud, pointing out the numerous objections the Partnership for National Unity Alliance for Change made. His statement is also highlighted by the report the Chief Elections Officer, Keith Lowenfield, gave the Elections Commission, discrediting hundreds of thousands of votes. It is against this backdrop that President Granger said it is possible the Elections Commission can nullify the elections by not declaring a winner. Now, it is not impossible that the Election Commission could say that based on the evidence that was presented, um, we cannot declare because the information indicates that there has been widespread fraud or that the process is flawed. However, the People's Progressive Party Civic, PPPC, has claimed that there is no law that allows the Elections Commission to refrain from announcing a winner of an election. The party believes the results of the recount should be used to declare a winner, results that place the PPP ahead of the incumbent party. Meanwhile, the Organization of American States, Ambassadors of the United States of America, Canada, Britain, the incoming chairperson of CARICOM, Ralph Gonzalez, local elections observers and the political parties have been calling on Chicom to declare an election's a winner from the results obtained from the recount. Guyana has been awaiting the results over three months after voting. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The observer team from CARICOM today put an end to attempts to cause the 2020 elections to be annulled by reporting that the recount was credible. Here is Godfrey Brooms. The Partnership for National Unity Alliance for Change objected numerous times during the recount, claiming persons who were either dead or out of the country are recorded as voted in the 2020 elections. Only yesterday, President of Guyana and the leader of the coalition, David Granger, said nothing prevents the Guyana Elections Commission, GCOM, from declining to declare an elections winner due to allegations of electoral fraud. However, the observer team from CARICOM today gave credence to the recount. According to the summary of the observation of the CARICOM team, the recount was conducted transparently. The report from the CARICOM team said the recount was credible and in keeping with the work plan produced by GCOM's secretariat. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Organization of American States is in support of the findings presented by the CARICOM observation team and is calling for the results of the election's recount to be accepted and a victor declared. Selene Griffith has more. In a statement issued today, the organization said it wholly supports the findings of the CARICOM team of scrutineers, that the results of the recount were transparent and credible, and said nothing prevents the chair of GCOM from now declaring a victor. The OAS reminded that the decision to proceed with the recount had the full support of all stakeholders in the March 2 general and regional elections, and reiterated that there is no reason not to support the results of the recount process. According to the statement, OAS observers present on each day of the national recount have reported that the process was conducted in a professional, transparent and impartial fashion. The organization believes the results published in the report of the Chief Elections Officer clearly shows that the opposition PPPC has won the favor of the voters and said the will of the people must be respected. 
The OAS is calling on the current administration of Guyana to begin the process of transition, which will allow the legitimately elected government to take its rightful place. Reporting for MTV's News Update, Celine Ruffin. More news coming up after the break. Are you running around looking for construction materials? Well, run down to Lens for affordable, high-quality building supplies. We have the widest range of grade A floor and wall tiles in any shape, size, and designs. And all types of ceramics, porcelain glazed and full body porcelain. We stock the largest collection of large format tiles. Check out our porcelain slabs as big as 10 feet by four and a half feet. Add a bit of elegance with our large range of decorative molding, our line of PPG paints will give you vibrant colors that won't fade. Our wall and ceiling gypsum system. It's light, durable, and fast. So come down to Lens at 136 Cherry Street, which is next to Buddy's and Pizza Hut, for that 31 years of Lens quality. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Are you having sore throat, fever, coughing, headache, or runny nose? Take Cetamol Cold and Flu day or night. Ask your pharmacist for Cetamol Cold and Flu and get back to the happier you. Distributed by Massey Distribution. Are you having sore throat, fever, coughing, headache, or runny nose? Take Cetamol Cold and Flu day or night. Ask your pharmacist for Cetamol Cold and Flu and get back to the happier you. Distributed by Massey Distribution. Welcome back. You're watching MTV's News Update. The Ghana Elections Commission today failed to decide if it will be using the data from the national recount to declare a winner of the 2020 elections. Here is more. The seven-member commission today met and discussed reports submitted by Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield and the CARICOM Observer team. However, no decision has been taken to use the data from the recount to declare which party won the elections. The commission is scheduled to meet again tomorrow at 10 hours to continue discussions to arrive at a decision for the declaration of the results from the national recount. All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, unfortunately, our discussions are not complete, and we are adjourning to, we have adjourned to 10 tomorrow, 10 a.m. tomorrow, to continue those discussions. At this point, I'll prefer to refrain from comments uh, until the discussions move a little further. The numerical figures from the recount shows the People's Progressive Party Civic winning the March 2 elections by 15,416 votes. The Ghana Elections Commission is mandated to make a declaration on or before June 16 in accordance with the addendum to the order that guided the recount. Following a suggestion by President Granger of a possible return to Parliament to approve funds for the country, the Opposition People's Progressive Party Civic has assured that it will not attend Parliament under the present situation. President David Granger yesterday in a press conference said a state of emergency could be called due to the low finances the country is operating with. The President noted it is his preference the first to have conversation with the opposition party before any declaration, but also underscored that the constitution provides for the president to declare a state of emergency without dialogue with the opposition. He said should that be declared, a return to parliament is necessary to approve funds for the country's economy to continue flowing. For funds to be provided, there will have to be some mechanism for Parliament to be reconvened. Um, right now, we are running, we are not uh, running on empty, but we are, we, are, we are running with very low funds. Um, the question you ask cannot be answered at the present time unless there is some mechanism for um, 
reconvening parliament. And that would require, of course, some form of agreement in which um, the parliament, the members of the 11th parliament, are prepared to uh, resume. But I, I, I cannot at this point say what legal mechanism could be employed to reconvene the 11th parliament. Guyana's economic status was recently revealed when the Guyana Sugar Corporation, Gaisuku, requested a government bailout due to its financial incapability. But the funds of the state has been so depleted that the finance ministry could not approve assent to the sugar company. However, the People's Progressive Party Civic, PPPC, is denying any invitation to return to parliament under the present situation. The party in a statement to the press said, and I quote, it will never return to parliament or support the convening of parliament unless the true results of the March 2 elections, as recently recounted, is lawfully declared by the Ghana Elections Commission. End of quote. The PPPC stated the constitution confers no power on the president to invoke a state of emergency after a general elections without a declaration of the results. Guyana is awaiting a declaration of the election's winner, which is to be given honor before Tuesday, June 16, according to the addendum to the order that governed the recount of the 2020 regional and the general elections. Reporting for MTV News Update, Godfrey Brooms. The Karakam team in its report labeled a constant objection of ballots as a fishing expedition. The objections were made by agents of the APNU AFC on the basis that the voter was either dead or out of the country on Elections Day. Karakam's team said the objections was to gain evidence for an elections petition while stating a lot of time was wasted by these objections. While the Ghana Sugar Corporation is in dire need for finances, money that the government is unable to provide, the president is still pleased with the decisions his party made for the industry. Godfrey Brooms with the details. As the sugar industry is in a dire financial state, with factories grinding to a halt due to limited finances, President David Granger has acknowledged the work done by the coalition for the sugar sector. He claimed that while sugar is being produced at a high cost, the coalition had to make harsh decisions to maintain the sugar corporation, providing employment for thousands. We have made some very hard decisions on the sugar industry. I would not like to, to comment on the fate of the sugar industry. We have done everything possible to, make that, to return that sugar industry to normalcy, if not profitability. And um, we will continue to help. We don't want to send anybody home, but we want an efficient sugar industry which um, can produce sugar at, uh, at competitive prices. We have to compete with Brazil, Cuba, you know. We have to com compete with heavy sugar producers around the world. And we have to make sugar more economically feasible and viable in this country right now. The price at which we, the cost of producing sugar in Guyana is too high. The coalition closed the Wales Sugar Factory, labeling it as an economic nightmare in 2016. The LBI estate was also closed under the coalition, but it was a decision made by the previous PPP government. Rose Hall and Enmore estates have also been placed on sale, while Gaisuka remains with three estates, Iflot, Blairmont and Albion. The coalition has been heavily condemned by the sugar workers and the PPPC, especially after the closures, as they said the government should have continued bailing out the corporation to sustain jobs. Reporting for MTV News Update, Godfrey Brooms. Still ahead, students return to school today to prepare for national exams and indigenous groups call for a postponement of exams citing hinterland students are disadvantaged. 
let FiberTech help you to renovate, refresh, and redecorate your kitchen. Spice up your kitchen with decorative colors, finishes, and accessories. Choose from an array of designs and beautiful granite colors that are blended to suit your choice. FiberTech Lifetime Kitchen is durable, thermite free and water resistant. Enjoy one year factory warranty along with our after sale service. So come on in and let us help you choose wisely. Everyone is now using Softex toilet tissue. Available in leading supermarkets countrywide, Softex is always silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp and babies love it. Softex comes available in single rolls, economy pack, six pack, and one dozen packages. Just perfect for any budget. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, telephone 622-4197. Start feeling good again with Probiotic XL. Probiotic XL contains a proprietary formula of 10 of the most important probiotics that have been researched and developed to help your body get rid of what's bad for it and help promote what makes you feel good. If leading a healthy life and enjoying every day is something you want to do, then Probiotic XL is for you. Welcome back, you're watching MTV's News Update. Students that will be writing the National Grade 6 Assessment C Second Cape in July and August today return to school in order to better prepare for the exams as required by the Ministry of Education. Selene Griffith with the details. Students turned out in their numbers despite the COVID-19 pandemic and calls from the Guyana Teachers Union for teachers and students to stay at home. Students were observed wearing face masks and following other safety guidelines. Schools were required by the Ministry of Education to construct a designated waiting area for the students with social distancing markings. However, this was only observed at a few schools as some are still in the construction process. As part of the safety guidelines, the Ministry of Education also stated that the students' temperatures should be tested upon entrance. The Guyana Teachers Union was very vocal disagreeing with the decision to have teachers and students return to school amid the global pandemic. President of the Union, Mark Light, had even asked teachers to take a stance against the Ministry of Education by performing a strike. Reporting for MTV's News Update, Celine Griffith. We tell you now, Indigenous groups have added pressure on the government calling on the Ministry of Education to postpone the national examinations. Yuan Williams filed that report. In a joint statement from the National Tushau Council, the North Rapununi District Development Board and the South Rapununi District Council are calling on the Ministry of Education to ensure students are properly readied and tutored for the important examinations. The Indigenous groups are asking the government to consider postponement of these exams since Indigenous children have not been sufficiently taught and are not ready for the exams. According to the three organizations, the abrupt announcement will have everlasting effects on the young children that are being forced to sit the National Grade 6 assessment on July 1 and 2. The Amerindian group said should the exams be written as scheduled, it will be another example of the rights of Amerindians being trampled. Students will be writing the NGSA CSEC and CAPE exams from next month. Luan Williams reporting for MTV's News Update. The two relief flights that were scheduled to return to Ghana on June 11 and 13 were cancelled because the Guyanese authorities were unprepared. This is according to the Caribbean Airlines Limited. According to the Caribbean Airlines, discussions were held with the government and the Guyana Civil Aviation Authority to return Guyanese to home, Guyanese who have been stranded across the Caribbean. The statement noted that a proposed schedule of recreation flights was supplied to the government and approval was given to operate within Trinidad, Barbados and Guyana on June 11, with the Guyanese authorities committing to providing a list of pre-approved Guyanese nationals to the airline. However, on June 9, the Guyana Civil Aviation Authority informed the airline that the necessary processes 
were not completed by the Guyanese authorities and were unable to provide the listing of nationals for repatriation to Caribbean airlines. On March 18, the government had announced that all international flights would be suspended due to COVID-19. As a result, Guyanese nationals were left stranded overseas. The Juan Williams for MTV's News Update. More news coming up after the break. Stay with us. It happens. Your septic tank is full. All the waste from your toilet goes into your septic tank through the sewage line. When your tank is full, the two most common indicators are an overflowing tank and an overflowing toilet. It is recommended that Sivan's Waste Management empty your septic tank every two to three years to avoid any embarrassment. And before you can say, shh, it's gone. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens available in tinted or clear complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Beeson Windows and Doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 226-1292. Get the right seal right now from Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., your immediate SKF sealing solutions. The SKF seal jet machine is capable of building seals from 5 millimeter to 600 millimeter in diameter in under five minutes. With technical support readily available, you can get a customized seal to suit virtually any industrial application, like buffer, rod, wiper, and piston seals. SKF seal jet machine, now at Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. West Indies head coach Phil Simmons said he was happy with the way his players have adapted to their new biosecure environment. Last week, the team arrived in Manchester for their three-match test series against England at the Emirates Old Trafford. Simmons said the team is in good spirits and are enjoying their work in the nets and their time off the field. He said the facilities are second to none and are truly world-class. The head coach informed with the entire situation of the world right now, they still have to be mindful they are preparing for a test series against one of the top test teams in the world. Simmons said they have to put everything in place and do everything correctly. The squad will engage in another six weeks of training as part of comprehensive medical and operation plans. Chelsea Lee, Report from TV's Sports Update. Today marked the 87th day that local boxers Colin Lewis, Kevin Alicock, Desmond Amsterdam and Dennis Thomas are stranded in Cuba. President of the Ghana Boxing Association, Steve Ninvo, said the association will continue to do all within its power to have the quartet returned home the earliest possible time. Even though the boxers have been given the necessary clearance and approval to return home, they could face another hurdle as there are no approved flights to bring them back home. The GBA said Carbon Airlines have written the National COVID-19 Task Force seeking clearance for a flight to repatriate the stranded Guyanese, but is still awaiting an official correspondence. Serena Williams would love to play this year's United States Tennis Open set for August 31 in New York without spectators and media. 
The former world number one and six-time U.S. Open champion has come back to tennis to win Grand Slams, which is her goal. The 2020 U.S. Open will serve off under strict restrictions due to the coronavirus pandemic. One such measure expects players be permitted to have one person to accompany them throughout the tournament. This could be an issue for Williams, who prefers to travel with her daughter, Alexis Olympia Ohanian Jr. Players including Novak Djokovic and Rafael Nadal have voiced their reservations about this year's event. Djokovic called the proposed protocols extreme, while Nadal said he has little desire to travel to New York. At the same time, the WTA and ATP Tour events are suspended until the end of July at the earliest. Charles Lee, reporter from TV Sports Update. Frankfurt West Indies were scheduled to host the professional players' draw for the Colonial Medical Insurance Super 50 Cup and Regional 40 Championship party today via Zoom meeting. The draft was expected to be conducted over two rounds and each franchise was required to pick a player in each round. Based on CWI's draft structure, each franchise will contract a minimum of 15 players, 13 pre-selected and two from the player pool. CWI's cricket operations manager Roland Holder said, The draft is now in its seventh year and demonstrates CWI's commitment to the professional cricket structure and system. He highlighted, the 90 regional players contracted will be able to train and practice professionally as CWI hopes for a return to regional cricket later this year. In keeping with a wide range of short-term recommendations from the CWI Financial Strategy Advisory Committee that were approved by the Board of Directors at the end of May, all contracts will be awarded for a six-month term at a 50% reduced value. Charles Seeley, reporter from TV Sports Update. Kima Roach has warned fellow Barbadian fast bowler Jofra Archer that there will be no place for friendship in West Indies take on England belatedly this summer. The long-awaited three-test series gets underway behind closed doors on July 8. Roach says his team's focus will be purely on winning. He said Jofra has done a fantastic job so far in his career, but there are no friendships in this series. More news coming up after the break. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. wrap up this evening's broadcast but before we go here's a reminder of our top stories caricom says recount was transparent and credible oas tells coalition to prepare for a transition of government president says gcom can't annul elections ppp will not return to parliament unless recount results are officially declared and in sport west Indies head coach said the team is in good spirits catch our river cars at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow i'm sandy ramutar saying good night <laughs>